Hello, my name is Miranda HP. And I'm Connor Calloway. And we are the Bountiful Bards. Please join us in our first ever recorded D&D campaign, The Fountains of Cathedra. All right, Leah. You and Shala make your way out into the darkened wilds surrounding etchings. This individual you just met you seem to be a, big, a great interest to the guards. You have made your way far enough away from Etchings now, for about a good five-minute walk in silence, to where it is just the two of you alone. What do you do? So, um, might be a bit belated to ask this, as I'm, I'm with someone wielding a giant axe outside the city. What made you uh, piss the guards off so much? She smiles at that. And looks down over at you, because she's a little bit taller than you are. I do my best to look super disarming. Right. Just charming and not at all a threat. Who, me? Just like a musician? What What do you think I did, little loot? Huh. I have no idea, to be honest. You could have said, fuck the church, or like, Peed in public. Like, there's a variety of things you could do. Honestly. I've done both those things. Fair. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Understand it. But I'm a I am stranger. Insane. Yes. So, they just, they literally just don't like you because you're not from here. Isn't that how most people react? I mean, I didn't get, like, thrown in a cell for not being from here when I got here. Well, it's because you're civilized. And I am not. So, why? Like, is Umbrecken considered uncivilized? Or are you saying you're a corner folk? I'm not from Umbrecken. Ah. I am a corner folk. Sweet! So, I have so many questions for you. I'm There's sure. a thought I want to know. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that song. I don't mean a word of it. Promise. I actually loved your song. And the other two you played. I like writing stuff. And you know, to get people to play them, you kind of have to lean into it. Whatever, it's fine. And I'm sure y'all actually appreciate the, the buildup of the I mythos. I said it was fine. I'm just really excited to meet a corner folk. Tell me about your people, please. They are alive. We exist. Do you have a government system? Is there like a monarchy? Are you sort of a a collective? Are you communists? Like, I, I just want to know. Communist? Yeah, where you're a commune where everybody helps each other out. With isting? I guess so. I'm okay. sorry. You can't use such big words with me. I highly doubt that. Pretty sure that's an act, but it's fine with me. She slightly smiles at you. But I really want to know. There's this group of people back where I'm from that like to do that. They're, we call them hippies. So you knew I was a corner folk the moment you saw me. I had a hunch. Why did you follow me? Because I want to know. And the guards were after me. I have a really deep anti-authoritarian streak. And you have a potential love for danger. I get bored easily. So do I. I'm from yonder place. That's the corner, just northwest of Etchings. That's where me and my people are from. Yonder place. Mm -hmm. Is it literally called that? And that's what we call it. Wow. That's what you folks call it on your map. It's, I'm hill folk. Are they all like you? Big and muscly and... We like to eat. And we like to not be eaten. You tend to get big when that's your lifestyle. Fair. But I mean it. Like, what system of government do you have? Like, how is how is your civilization organized? I can't organized? go telling you all my secrets. I have to stay mysterious. <sighs> okay, fine. What's your favorite color? She looks at you very closely and goes, purple. Okay. Takes out notebook. <laughs> they for it. I can't... Color purple. I came to the city... Because I was trying to listen. For what? Apparently, there's rumors that corner folk have been attacking villages. Yes, that I did hear. Do you know what village? I do. It is Hillend. 15 she, miles. She looks up kind of at the stars in the sky. And you can see each other because 
There's enough light reflecting off the snow to do so. I think that's that way. And she turns and starts walking in that general direction. Oh, why, why are we going? That's 15 miles. That's a, that's a trek. Mm-hmm. We should be there by morning. Why? I have to see what did it. Oh. My people don't attack towns. Well, they never have in the past. Not unless we have to. That's what I said. So if there's rumor going around that some of my people are attacking towns, I need to go make sure they're not. Okay. We have several different tribes that wander through the hills, but we're all one community. If one of our branches is acting out, it needs to be cut. Writes down might be communist. (laughs) (laughs) So, I appreciate you pointing me the way. If you want to go back to the city, I understand, but I'm going to have to make my way towards the town. Is there anything... Well, I imagine there would be things between etchings and Illend. It's off the civilized road by about 10 miles or so, maybe 12-ish miles. There's probably not going to be anything between the two. So is there like an outpost or anything that I know of that's outside the city where, or like anything that's like a travel stop or something? Uh, No. It's just all wilderness for the most part. There's no villages this close to etchings. There are along the civilized road. There is, just like your village is. But when you get closer to the city, it's not so much. It's about a half day's journey. So, so do I have to... So are we like... Is this like a weekend? Like what is this a school night? It's what the it's, first 7th. So yes, it is the weekend. So you have the first 7th and 8th, which are technically the weekends. Okay. Where there's no set. There's no school. So I'm going to tell Shala. Okay. So how about you hang out for a second and I'll get us horses? I prefer my own two feet. It's just faster, and you might not be so tired. And if there's something going on down there, wouldn't it behoove you to get there quicker? Are you coming with me? Might as well. Because, hey, hey, who's a good witness for who did and didn't do something? I am an upstanding scholar. Though, you know, I could always write this down. And like Mm -hmm. you said, stories and songs shape minds. It's a very unique first date. (laughs) I don't want a horse. I'll carry you if you get tired. All right. So I'll sing us a little song on my lute to inspire us. (laughs) Here we go, a wandering (laughs) along the path so white. The corner folk, there is no guard in sight. (laughs) Hopefully we won't die. (laughs) And hopefully we'll stay alive as we go walking to Hilland with this barbarian lady who might be my end. (laughs) You get the DM inspiration for that. Here's the inspiration, Die. Thank you. Goodness gracious, that's amazing. Roll me a performance check with advantage. I love it. Ooh, much better. Uh, 19 plus 8. Uh, as you were singing this song, you have made Shala, uh, Shala smile just wholeheartedly. She is full grin as you end. And she goes, I don't think I'm going to be your end. <laughs> Not unless you break my heart. We live out in the corner, away from the church. We've been that way ever since the beginning. Some of us didn't like what they were doing in Miro, so we decided to make our own little home out there in the wilds. Wait, what were they doing in Miro? Roll me a history check. Shiesty. 12. 12. The DC was 10 because you know the lore. The church began in Miro. Oh. That's what she's referring to. Okay. Yeah. Or the, you know, the entire, what is the church led government called again? Uh, Theocracy. The theocracy started there. We didn't want to live under their thumb, so we started our own lives out here against the sleeping spine. Fair. I'm very interested to see what, like, your history is and just, like, you know, comparison. Because it's, it's pretty obvious to us, even people who are within the sway, I would say, that the church isn't always shh. telling the truth. She just put out her hand very gently. And the shush was not by no means a downwards towards you. Just hold on a second. And in the distance, you hear her howling. She turns her head, squints. We're fine. They're not close. Come on. Okay. 
So y'all's break with the church, does that include every single one of their precepts? No, yeah, we live free. Without rule. Without taxes. We just live together. Yeah, well, I like rules. But anyway. um, (laughs) (laughs) She smiles at that as well. Maybe you should give it a try one day. Well, yeah, absolutely. Would love to. I know a beautiful place out in the hills. I'd love to show you. Love to go. Absolutely. The night continues. Anything else you want to ask before you get to Hill Inn? So I've read stories about, in in my studies, in the archives. In your studies. Well, mostly. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, don't, I don't get out as much as I want to. Um, where there are people who can perform, not miracles, because that's like churchy stuff, but like essentially do that. And the church, of course, tracks them down and either absorbs them or eliminates them. Do you all have people who can do stuff? Oh, yeah, we do. What kind of stuff? Oh, I can't say no to that face. Several of us had the ability to become very passionate and use our passions. Some of us are just seem to be more in tuned. My people are mainly the passionate sort. We ah. tend to feel an emotion and we act on it. You gotta act on rage sometimes. With then not just rage. Passion. Certainly. Emotion. Expression. Yes. All very important. Can relate. If you ball it up all the time, she kind of gestures her arms upwards with the big axe going out as well. Well, you may end up doing things you regret. Fair. And my people do not regret anything. I mean, that's good. It's a nice night. It is. There's an owl. She points as you look up and see a shadow flying over the top. What do you think we're going to find there? Do you think that there may be danger? There may be. But we're also bringing danger. So we'll see if they cancel out. (laughs) Is that the name of your axe? No. Okay. (laughs) That'd be pretty cool. This is concarne. With meat. That's what it means. Roger that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Something from the old times. Eventually, after several hours, then you sit and rest by a tree, maybe get a few hours of shut eye and stuff, whatever you'd like to do, doesn't matter. But, you know, you do make, it doesn't take that long to walk that far. You can generally walk at a good pace. What is average walking pace? Three, three about, you can walk about three miles an hour. Three to four miles an hour is about the average walking place. And it was still early. It was still like six o'clock or so or seven o'clock when you made it to the to the inn. So now I would say it's been about four, three or four hours. You two just walking a lot in silence and also her asking questions about you, where you're from, your family, um, and things of that sort. You finally make it to Hill Inn, which is just a standard looking village with thatched roofs. Smoke fit coming out of chimneys. It's late now, probably about 10-ish. People are starting to wind down and such. Shala goes. So this is where I'm not very good at things. So if you can go in and see what we can find out. Sure, I can do that. I think we should find the local inn, maybe. Yeah, the as long as it has a pub attached or is like sells alcohol, yeah, it's the best place to go. I think it's that house that the drunk individual is coming out of. And as you look over, you see, yes, somebody that seems a bit staggered and haggard <laughs> walking out, uh, has a bandage on his head, it looks like, um, and is trotting his way along the alley. The building he came out of, there is a sign on the outside and it is painted green. And it's it's simply called the green scale. Okay. Um, is she saying outside while I go in? You gonna leave me out in the cold? No, I was just asking because I thought that's what she said. She can go in with you. She she takes her axe and walks over and kind of plumps it in the snow and covers it up. Okay, I'm going to like while she's doing that, just like really subtly shift my cloak to like 
more of a travel stained cloak. Like before, it was very active camouflage. Now I want it to just kind of look like it's been through some stuff. You have a magic cloak. Maybe. It's I found okay. it. My people do not care about magic, so long as you use it for good and don't harm others. Good to know. So are you magical? Maybe. I'm magical. Yeah, you are. I mean... <laughs> she smiles. <laughs> oh, really? What is your magic? I told you I'm passionate. Ah. Show me what you can do, magic girl. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to use uh, prestidigitation to just, like, as we walk forward, like, just to kind of, like, clean myself up a bit. Okay. That's a neat trick. Um, as you go inside. But I'm doing it like this. So, like, as if I'm just, like, physically wiping it off. Ooh, that, I love that. So you just, your hand and you just see just the faintest of clean, just, it just the shift of dirt and everything. I love it. Yeah. As you go inside, um, it is a rather empty place. The night's almost done. Bar, uh. Bar workers are, uh, staff workers are just cleaning up tables, flipping over chairs, uh, young fellows mopping the floor, and naturally in the back behind the bar is a green-scaled dragonborn. What kind of um, accents do I hear? Uh, you hear the, the very similar accents to etchings, just a little bit longer, essentially. So where Miro, uh, I would uh, state Miro is a little more Canadian-ish. Kind of to it. A. and Yeah, A. Eh? Uh, and then, you know, as it goes a little... Yeah, Etchings you know. is like the Chicago Common and the... <laughs> sure, yeah, something like that. Because, well, basically, I'm just trying to listen. So Are you about to I... speak Chicago? No. Well, that's that's the standard Midwest Atlantic accent where it's I understand. Not, not a lot of pitches and falls anyway. But, like, so what I'm basically just trying to do is mimic their tone. So I sound like them because without... Meaning to, they're more likely to open up and talk to somebody who sounds the same way they do. So I'm just trying to sound like them. Understood. Not like a ton. Like, not like I'm putting it on. But I'm sure Leah has done this a lot. Especially when you sing. Okay, so what do you ask the innkeeper? Seems like it's been rough around here. Oh, 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 hello. Oh, we're about to close up. Uh, uh, travelers, do you need a place to stay? I've... Yes, and I just, you know, I, I heard that this area was attacked. Are you all right? Uh, he's an older dragonborn that has, uh, you know, some wisp growing off of his scales. You know, dragonborns don't really get to grow beards, but they do have a bit, maybe a bit of, uh, you know, like whisker growth. And his whiskers seem to be drooping down just a little bit. A little hunched, uh, very gentle individual. Doesn't have to give any other... Uh, Intimidating dispositions. Uh, he may have bouncers for that. And he goes, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yes, yes, a little. Uh, we've had... Uh, I'm sorry, we're about out of food at the moment. I, don't, I can't feed you anything. I understand. I'm I'm actually the forward part of a group that comes in after disasters and tries to help. So I'm just here to kind of evaluate and survey what's going on to see if there's any way that we can best assist you. Roll me a deception check. Mm, that's kind of a deception because I do plan to actually do that. When I, I understand. Get back. No, you're fine. That one. A natural one. He kind of gives a little squint at you. No, I mean it. Really. And then looks over at uh, your partner and looks back and he goes, "It's okay. Keep your secrets." But I do want to help. Then help. That's, that's... Do you have any food that you can provide to the town before the etchings official storage comes? Bread and cheese. You keep your food. I just wanted to see if you were willing to offer it. Thanks. We'll be fine until Good they get stuff. here. We're, it's just we wouldn't get through the rest of the cold season without it avoiding. So you know, you, part of it is I do, when I go back, I do plan on recommending, you know. Oh, the messages have already been sent. It's fine, dear one. What is your name? I'm Leah. Mm -hmm. What's yours? Uh, my name is uh, Yachts. Y-A-T-Z. Kind of a grandfatherly figure. I can't believe I have to look at that. It's okay. What was the natural one plus what? For deception. Six, so yeah. seven. It's a seven. Yeah, natural ones aren't automatic failures when it comes to skill checks, as you should know. The natural 20s are awesome, and if it's an awesome moment, I will make it awesome, but you know, 
It's not in that. It doesn't mean it. you didn't roll high enough. He did see through it. The DC was 10, but still, remember that in the future. Well, is so good at lying. Why is it when this moment comes that she can't lie? She might be a little flustered. Now, performance anxiety even for the first time. <gasps> Gasp. Not the first time. Don't be silly. Oh, I understand. Well, tr- okay, we're going a little deeper. <laughs> yeah, it's not the first time. Let's not forget about that one, that one time during the orchard. Uh, okay. I remember the extensive part of the backstory you gave me. Uh, <laughs> So you're here to help. We were attacked by some corner folk who stole all of our goods, ran off with a bunch of our livestock, butchered a few, and left them in the snow. We're just waiting for food to be brought in. What did they look like? Do you, were there any descriptions? Uh, I did not see them. I just heard... I heard a commotion outside, like a booming in the distance towards the stock, okay, or towards the stocks. But um, Hafrid was on watch there and he was he just left actually he they apparently clobbered him over the head and he knocked him out so he only got to see him for a brief second would it be possible to talk to him oh you can probably catch him his house is out to the right and he was a bit he was a bit shadowed before he left so you might be able to he stumbles a bit you you follow the snow Okay. You're not going to hurt him? No, of course not. I genuinely want to know what happened. All right. So, we, so I'm going to hold a room for you while you're here, right? Yes, thank you. Okay. I'll, we'll talk about when you get back. Be safe. Of course. So I'm going to go out to follow the guy who All is right. stumbling along. You don't have to do it, but she is going to roll a survival check to f- track the drunk. And she has. She goes, and when you walk outside, Shala goes, that was very well done. He went this way. Right! So I turned the opposite way of the way I was going and go that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you eventually find, find in the zigzag of the snow, you find them. Uh, it, he is a kind of got a bit of a belly, balding on the side, even though it's covered up with a bandage. Um, he's just finished relieving himself in a little alley as he's stepping out and kind of tucking his shirt back in right when you appear in front of him. Oh, oh wait. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that That's just me. Yachts told us that you saw He's the, kind of looking around like kind of skittish. Y- you saw the attack and we're, we're trying to help so I wanted to know if I could talk to you. Do you, do you want to go home so I can, maybe I can help you with that, that wound on your head. Oh no, 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 my wound's fine. The, it's a fine wound. My sister took care of it. Uh, what, what do you need to ask me? Oh, I just want to know if you saw what they looked like. Any identifying insignia or attire? Uh, they were furious, f- ferocious looking. Uh, they, you know, big uh, beards. Um, they're dirty. Uh, maybe tattoos. Uh, what big... color was their hair? <laughs> uh, brown. Brown, okay. Uh, yeah, but that's all I remember. And then one of them clogged me overhead with like a club, I guess, and cracked my skull and knocked me out. Oh, my. Yeah, big, big intimidating people. Goodness. Yeah, nothing, well, nothing I could do. Were they wearing like furs or leathers? Uh, I, it was it was dark. I I I I I don't know. Before you got whacked over the head, did they did you catch a whiff off of any of them? If you don't mind, just close your eyes and nah. just picture yourself in the moment. You'd be surprised how much you can remember. Give me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Nine. That was nine plus six, so it's fifteen. Fifteen. Mm, uh, uh, miss, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't want to close my. I, I. I would like to go home. Is there anything else I can help you with? Well, I mean, that would really help. That's all. I'm trying to write the most accurate picture of what happened as possible because I do want to make sure that we get you as much aid as possible. And part of that aid might be finding who did this and being able to isolate it at the source. No, no, no. I. I, I have all the aid I need. Um. Uh. I gave. My, I gave my report to the mayor and. Uh, you, I mean, I, I need to go home. And he moves past you, trying to excuse me, and then starts walking away. Okay. So wait till he's staggered away. Mm-hmm. Um, any of that useful? None of it. He's lying. My people aren't dirty. Okay. You want to follow him? Wait till he gets home, or what do you want to do? I have a sit. Do you think it would be worth interrogating him? He almost seemed afraid. So maybe it's not that um, your people attacked him. Maybe he's been told to say that. Hmm. 
which would mean somebody in a higher authority said that. It's very possible. Would you like to maybe make a round on the outskirts and see if we can actually physically see the damage? Maybe you can ascertain what caused it. Uh, could you think the innkeeper will tell us where the stocks are? Yeah, that would be a wonderful idea. Sure, we can stick our head back in there and ask. All right. She seems a bit irritated. Not at you. Yeah, no, I get it. Just in general. You go back and, uh, oh, welcome back. Uh, your, your rooms are ready. Uh, yes. Can you point me in the direction of where the attacks first began so I can go and take a look-see? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you that. Um, uh, I won't tell if you won't. Oh, no, I, I can't lie for nothing. People will ask me and I will just spill the beans. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just... Can you tell me where I'm not supposed to go? You're not supposed to go... That way. And he points kind of like towards the rear right of his building. Because that's the way you're not supposed to go. We, we would never do such a thing. I'm going to go take a nice brisk evening walk before bed. You know, freshen up the lungs and clear the mind. Right, right. Two, we would never do Two that. bedrooms or one? How much are they? Shala is already walking out the door. Just one would be fine. <laughs> oh, oh, Okay. I'm, I'm going to try really hard with this one. Okay? <laughs> you go, go, go. <laughs> bye, bye, classic. <laughs> Tears of Sinai. <laughs> Roses. <laughs> um, you quickly catch up to Shala, who has made her way back in the direction he pointed. And in about a minute or two, you do come on on just a completely ruined building. But there's another individual that's there as well. Um, you hear as you're walking up, Who is that? What's he look like? She She. is an older woman. A little bent, not too much yet. Probably late 50s, early 60s-ish. Are you calling that an old woman? Bit a hood up. No, no, no. I I didn't mean old. My apologies. (laughs) Older is what I meant. I do. You best say sorry to my mom. (laughs) I am sorry to your mother. Uh, Constantly, all the time. She's terrifying. Uh, She's four foot three and scares me. Mom is not four three. Uh, It doesn't matter. She's shorter than me, but I feel like she stands taller and looks down on me. So she does it, make a habit. I don't care how how tall she actually is. She, to me, she's a giant. Now, uh, she's a wonderful woman, by the way, people who are listening. I just have the appropriate amount of respectful intimidation, as one should, from a mother-in-law mm-hmm. of such high caliber. Now, as you get closer, she looks up and, like I said, she's an older woman with a hood up, very tight to her uh, face and, you know, a scarf wrapped around her head. It's a pink scarf. That really is offset for the rest of the browns and grays. And she goes... Very obviously handmade. Who are, who are you people? We just wanted to see what happened here. Who are you people? I don't know you. I'm just a student. This is my companion. She keeps me from getting into trouble and doesn't I, let other people get me in trouble. I keep her from getting in trouble. Hmm. Well, here's the mess. I'm sure you wanted to come see where all the corner folk came stomping around. Do you know who really did this, then? I have no clue. But I don't believe Hafford for a minute. I didn't either. I didn't bandage that wound. And I bandage uh, every wound. Are you his sister? Mm-mm. No, he said his sister took care of him. I'm Hedge Mother Delane. Hedge Mother Delane. Mm-hmm. I take care of all the wounds around here. And he didn't come to me, so he's lying. Does he have a sister? Yeah, he's got a sister. Aggie. She lies too. They always lied. Oh my. Ah, it's just town folk business. You know how it is. You're born here, you die here, you know everything about everybody. Nobody gets away with nothing. Nobody's not seasoned as they should be. Oh yeah. I I know the feeling. You tell them, hey, you gotta run to you know the city and they freak out. How can I help you? Well, we want to help you we want to figure out who did this well so if it wasn't the corner folk who get to looking let's see what we can dig up okay roll me a survival check eleven eleven well as you're making away along you see the building is just destroyed the crates and stuff inside are just completely demolished and shredded you see bits of frozen salted meats just laying about and fruits and things of that nature uh, unfortunately as you go you stumble 
and you look down and it is the it is a carcass of what you believe to be a goat or a sheep or something the back half of it only okay Sorry, I'm looking at something real quick. Take your time. This is D&D. You got all day. <laughs> I have this really nifty thing called an edit button. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so did we already include Jack of All Trades and Expertise? Yeah, that's all okay. That's all in there it's already. All okay, now. I hope so, because I didn't want to have to remember that. No, you're fine. No, I was, I was looking because... Oh. What are you looking for? I, as the DM, will help since you have no other players Well, I'm help. trying to just like... Well, I was thinking about using the... So I personally can do detect magic. I know the wand is locate object. Mm -hmm. um, I was just looking to see if she had anything else in her kit that would help her see anything. I mean, you um, can try and detect magic if you like. That would definitely help. Well, I just wanted to see if there is anything like any magical residue or whatever. Because she said her folk do magic, but they're more the ragey sort. So that makes me think... Are you going to use a spell slot or... Well, that's it's not a ritual, is it? Detect magic? I think it is. Detect oh, it is a ritual. So, um, I can spend ten minutes to cast it okay. in a sphere. So I'm gonna kind of just do it like over the carcass. No, yeah. over it's a thirty foot. Oh, while sphere. you were searching. Yeah, so I'm All gonna right. kind of just hum to myself. Okay. We'll say you did that right before you found the carcass. Then I apologize. I should have gave you time. I saw you watching and reading something there. I was just moving ahead. You don't detect any magic except. On the older, uh, on uh, the hedge mother, it's, there's a, something magical that is betwixt her. Uh, I shouldn't say betwixt her breast. I would say that for a man on her chest on a necklace. There seems to be something that looks about the size of a large coin or an, you know like a little disc that she has hidden beneath her cloak. That's actually all you detect. It is. And I believe if you can uh, read the spell for me, it is a t you can actually tell what kind of magic it is. If you don't mind giving, me a I glance. believe so. Yeah, I think so too. Um, yes, and you learn at school of magic, if any. Right. So you're beginning to see the different colors, and the different textures and things like that. When you look and you detect the magic there, you don't feel or sense. And you need a little more experience to really understand the different layers of magic. But you've, you know, you've done this a few times when you found that decanter of water, endless water, and things like that. This particular magic that whatever is held there is uh, abjuration. It is a protective or a restorative type of magic. It is you're getting a good feeling from it. It isn't nothing destructive like you've you've seen with your fire magic or you've seen in other types. It's definitely a protective type of magic. Is she still there? Yeah, she's there helping you look. She's like, eh, lifts up a piece of wood and tossing it. Um, you see Shala's over there. She's using her hand just to swipe away the snow, possibly looking for tracks or something like that. Okay. Do I get a good vibe from Hedge Mother Delane? Ooh, an insight check that does not involve lying. Please roll that. <laughs> uh, maybe I should use your dice? You, can, that's you a... can still use my inspiration without telling me. So yeah, you roll with advantage. Oh, I rolled with advantage? You just did. Oh, I thought I just added it to it. But okay, that's fine. No, my inspiration, you get to roll with advantage whenever you choose. That sucked. Okay, um, 16. 16? Uh, so you know a hedge mother is some is definitely, whenever somebody's having a baby, She's yeah. the wet nurse that comes. Yeah, we had, she's well, the, She wouldn't be a wet nurse. That's not what wet nurses do. Excuse me. Uh, doula? Midwife. Midwife. Thank you. The The name for, escaped me. So she's the midwife. This is Nanny Og of the village oh, from yeah, Terry no, Pratchett. Sure so we yeah, have one. You, and it could be just because you could be blinded by a bias, but this is definitely, the orphans know who she is. Everybody comes to her to get, to, to feel better when they're feeling sick. She's not magical. At least people don't think she is. But she's the closest thing to it to make somebody feel better without going to the clerics. Okay. You get a good vibe off of her. Because I'm... Uh... Don't forget you found the half half a carcass, by the way. Yeah, I know. I'm going to ask her to come take a look at it. Who? The uh, 
Both hedge of them? mother. Well, hedge mother, because I'm oh. sure Shala is going to show up eventually. She comes over as you yell out, and we'll say Shala comes over as well, and they come and look down at it. Uh, what'd you What'd you find? What do you think? Like, did this? Like, if it were corner folk who were desperate, they certainly wouldn't do this because they would need to take as much of it as they could with them. And what, like, so what does this look like, DM? Like, what is Uh, it like? You said it's like half of a carcass. Like, does it look like it was cut clean in half? Does it look like it looks like something bit it, like an apple? It's in a crescent shape. So unless the corner folk have super big mouths. Not that I know of. You know anything about that? And she looks up at Shala and Shala looks down at her and kind of squints a little bit. No. I don't know anything about that. Mm Mm-hmm. Giant. Are there giants in these parts? Uh, Are there giants in these parts? She looks up at Shala who just kind of... (sighs) Not this far southeast. If they did come this far... Something's wrong with them. Huh. Well then, maybe we should go talk to old Halfred and have him come clean. What do you say? Come on, girls. All and right. She turns and leaves. Girl power, let's do this. As she goes, she goes to knock on the door of a random house. And you think that Halfred's going to come to it or his sister maybe if they share a home or something like that. But no, instead this uh, dwarf comes out... Uh, uh, baldish dwarf, blondish hair. He is definitely, uh, he's got his uh, evening knickers on and he is oh, looking around like, he's like, Delane, why, what do you need? He goes, that Halfred is lying and we need to find out why. We, we've been over this. We, he, he's fine. He did not come to me for that wound. I told you he's lying. Now come on. Either you got to be there for it or I'm going to drag him back here and it's going to be embarrassing for both of you because he's going to make a lot of racket as I go. Fine. He goes back inside and puts on his cloak and comes back out and says, "Well, let's let's be on with it then." Puts on his walking boots instead of slippers. Yeah, yeah. Slippers are off. He puts, <laughs> puts on like his a jacket boots. over his like bathrobe. <laughs> you eventually make it to the house and she raps on the door with her bony knuckles that definitely could crush an apple with in one hand easy. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, you, I knew you were trouble. They were, they're, they're trouble, Mayor. I don't, who are they? Don't you worry about who they are. Did you see a giant or not? Time to roll an intimidation check. I, I, I didn't see no giant. Uh, Shala, I told you. Flex. Excuse me. And he looks over at Shala. And it'd be very important you actually tell the truth here. Instead of spreading bad rumors about corner folk. Now there, let's do an intimidation check. Yeah, that'll do it. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah, it was a giant. Why'd you lie? (sighs) What's scarier? Five or six corner folk or a giant? A giant? I didn't want to scare everyone. So you lied. I was terrified to raise the alarm because I was afraid we couldn't, if it was going to attack the villagers, I was lucky it just started eating the sheep and goats. So there's only one. (sighs) Yeah. Really sickly looking. Poor thing was gaunt and skinny and all of its skin was like, it was hanging off its body, like not wounded, but just like, like it just lost a bunch of weight real quick or something like that. Well, see, here's the thing. I felt sorry for it and... I didn't want to draw the alarm and have it eat the villagers. So I hoped it would just go off. It seemed a bit manic. I was too afraid. So no, it wasn't corner folk. It was a giant. See, because when you lie like that, I understand you were afraid. But the problem is, is if you get innocent people killed because of your lie, that's on you. And I'm sure you don't want blood on your hands. I want blood on my hands, but I... If it came back, it came back. I've been trying to keep an eye out for it. Which way did it go? Charlotte speaks up and goes. She seems a bit distant as she says, I know which way it went. Great. Thanks for your help. Can I go inside? And the the mayor's like, oh, oh, you're... (sighs) 
double watch duties from now on. I'm I'm extending your sentence. I I didn't do nothing wrong. I was just afraid. I understand, but you made me get out in the snow. You're getting another week of watch duty for public indecency. Good night, Hafford. And he just turns around and storms off. <sighs> and then the hedge mother goes with him. Y'all follow? Well, I'm. Well, I didn't know if. And he's pointing back at y'all as he's walking, talking to the hedge mother. Um, you over here? Who are these? Who are these people? Is that they're fine? They're outsiders. They they want to come see giants or something. I don't know. They're crazy people. I sent them on the way. I just kept them with me. Uh, so I guess we'll go the direction Shala. Well, we have to go get her axe and then. Yeah, uh, Shala's just with you. She's thinking the same thing. She has to get her axe, and the mayor goes. Well, I can't have a giant walking up into our village and eating everything. We got to get together the guard to go after him. We might be able to help with that, Mr. Mayor, sir. Both their heads snap at you. How are you going to help with that? Carefully. Who are you? Interested persons for the betterment of yeah, society. Yeah, leave, leave them alone. They're interested it's a persons. really long acronym. I didn't make it up. I, I forget it half they the time. They came from Etchings to do an investigation. They're just going to, they can go find where the giant is and come back and tell us. Right? Yep. She winks at you. 100%. Y'all go on and do your thing. Let me take him and we're going to talk more about getting the guard together and preparing for the, if it comes back. And I do think that maybe this should be your infrastructure week because, you know, you need to rebuild after the attack on by the not corner folk. Ah, we don't have room in the budget for infrastructure. And then he continues storming off. And you better tell him to make room. <laughs> we'll just leave you, you and <laughs> Shala. She just grabs him by the ear. What do you mean there <laughs> exactly. ain't no money in the budget for infrastructure? <laughs> yep, that's definitely this. That's that is definitely what's going on. Uh, we have we have to conserve our we have to conserve our wealth for you know just in case something happens. What you mean in case something happens? It happened. Now we got to take care of it. And building fall down, go boom. Put building back up. Not <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Not difficult. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we'll... You and Shala are both alone. Go back to her axe. So it was a super skinny, looks like something was really wrong giant. So a couple questions. First, why would there be a giant this far? And two, what would be potentially making it sick, like, abruptly? Leah, I appreciate how far we've come. I can handle this next bit on my own. I'm sure you can, but I'm here to write a heroic ballad about your deeds, so... What's about to happen won't be heroic. Yeah, I know. I doubt most of them were, but they have to dress them up that way. I don't need it dressed. Well, it's not for you. It's for people to sing in bars, so, I mean... No one needs to sing about this. Not everything needs to be a song. I'm sorry, you don't understand. It's my friend. She went missing. She got sick. And I've been trying to find her. Maybe I can help. You can't help. How do you know? Because Huck's family is has a hereditary disease that every now and then jumps up in their generations. And when they catch it, it can't be cured. Nothing can be done by it. They go rabid. And they eat and they eat and they eat. And then they, they upchuck it. And then they eat and they eat and they eat until they die because they can't keep anything down. How do you know it can't be cured? Because it's never been cured. No one in my tribe has ever been able to cure it when we were friends with the hill giants. And whenever a hill giant comes down with it, they just take them out because they have to. So what I'm about to have to go do is not something worth writing about because it's not who Huck really is. Huck wasn't, wouldn't come down here and just destroy everybody's food like this. Huck picks apples by shaking trees. Have you... Tried healing it with magic? No. The churches keep all the healing magic. Maybe we could it, try that? It's a disease. Do you have anything that can cure a disease? Maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you have that can cure a disease? I call it a word of healing. And it worked really good on a lot of other stuff. Roll me an arcana like check. Fire and I don't have restoration. I don't like. I wonder if that's what it means. Huh. Wow, it went from a twenty to a two. Plus four, six. Six. 
it may or may not cure a disease. You know, it can help you heal a wound, a physical wound, but as far as a disease, it may not help with that. Mm. So y'all are going to really go after this thing? Chase it off? The hedge mother, uh, Delane, has come back up to you guys. Uh, turns out the situation is a bit more complicated than that. What do you mean complicated? Well, this, this giant is afflicted by a disease that is causing it to go rabid and go on a rampage. So it's not its fault. And I don't know of anything that can cure it. I don't know if maybe you could help. Maybe. Because if it's an innocent creature and it's not its fault, I don't think it's right to not try anything. Roll me a persuasion check. Twenty-two. A twenty-two. Yeah. Hey. The hedge mother looks around. Yeah, I got something that can help. I mean, I was going to ask you, like, I guess as we're talking through it, uh, yeah, I was going to ask if you know where I could locate a book on recent accounting, but, you know, I don't want to be weird. Huh? I don't read no books. Listen. Well, I... Well, take care of this. Will that giant come back and bother my people? Shall I? She will not come back. If you can, if there's any way you can help this giant, she will not come back to harm your people. I promise. All right. She reaches into her cloak and pulls out basically look what looks like a golden disc with a green emerald in the middle of it. Takes off the chain, piles it up in there, and says, "This is a family heirloom. I use it in the most dire of circumstances. Whenever somebody comes down with fire fever, and I ain't got the herbs to break it." Once the sweats start running. You ever seen somebody when they stop sweating when they have a fever? Yeah. Now, if you could take this and hold it against whoever's sick, it'll probably take care of what's going on. Now, since it's a giant, you might have to hold it for a little longer than usual. Okay. Now, will you bring it back to me? Of course. All right. Well, here you go. I'll find you. I do not doubt that. And you know what that is. I ain't going to say it out loud. Yes. But if they come for me, I got ways to get out of this town, and I'm going to come for you. Noted. And I'm going to go to your town, wherever you came from. Absolutely. And be their hedge mother. Sure. And just can't cure whoever you love. I'm joking, of course, dear. You'd like our hedge mother. What's her name? Leatherwax. Oh, it's my sister. And from Dewdrop. Yep. I knew that accent. She's super great. What's your name? Leah. Leah. I remember when you was a baby when I was over there and just visiting. I knew they all knew each other. Well, of course we all knew each All old people know each other. <laughs> Not that I'm that old. 56 ain't old. Now go take care of this giant problem, you two. Don't let it eat you. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go see Yachts. Or whatever his name is. I'm going to go get That's a pint. <laughs> I love that Terry Pratchett reference. How all old people know each other. This can help my friend. That's what she I said. I don't have to kill my friend. No. And you sure that will work? We gonna find out. Let's go. Okay. You hear a horn in the distance. What are gnolls doing this far? Into the lands. I feel like this is a systemic problem. That's a hunting horn. Well, let's get your axe then. They're hunting my friend. We better hurry. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review anywhere you've found us. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Bountiful Bards. We hope to see you again on the civilized road. And bring bread and cheese. <laughs> As the story goes, until then.